Hey everyone, Katrina Sawa here. I wanted to talk to you today about follow-up marketing and what else you need to be doing in your follow-up. Uh, as a business coach now for 21 years, follow-up is one of those things that I have, I mean, I've been, I'm nowhere near perfect, but it's something that I spend a lot of effort on because I love networking. I love speaking at events, in-person, virtual, it doesn't matter. And, but your time is wasted doing those things if you're not doing the follow-up, right? And it used to be that my goal way back when, 21 years ago, when I was networking at like four different chambers, a leads group, uh, e-women uh, back in my area here, um, it used to be that my goal is to meet as many people as humanly possible, get all their contact information, follow up with them like crazy, and um, via email, phone, mail, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and nowadays, I'm a little bit more selective on who I capture, uh, of course. I still want to, it's still a numbers game, you guys. So it's still important to get as many people as possible who are remotely interested in what you do into your world, okay? But they're going to be at various levels of cold, warm, or hot potential prospects or referral sources. So you just have to sort them as such and or feed them information and education, inspiration, tips, whatnot, uh, accordingly, right? So you want to capture the right contacts information when you're at places. And even when you're speaking online or if you're networking online, there's ways to drop hints in the chat uh, or links to an opt-in page to get a free download or to schedule a call, et cetera. But there's, you want to continually get them into your world on your email list, et cetera. But what's important about follow-up is to not just rely on email. How many times just in the last, say, seven days have you, you, how many times have you looked in your spam, trash, or promotional folder? How many times? One, seven, 25? Uh, like, really? Right? How many times do you actually look in those folders? Especially if you're on Gmail, it is harder to find all those other emails, right? And the let's face it, in my Gmail, I don't use it for business. I use it for personal stuff. But my junk folder at, on Gmail is a freaking nightmare. I mean, there is so much crap over there and like nasty stuff. Like, you know, there's sexual stuff, there's money stuff, there's scams, right? So I understand not wanting to look there, but I, and I know the majority of the population is using Gmail these days for your main email um, marketing where you're, where all your emails are coming in. So if you're doing that and not checking your spam or trash very often, or maybe your promotional folder, guess what? The people that you're emailing are not looking there much either, I'm trying to educate the world on checking your spam, trash, and promotional folders every day, every single day. You're missing stuff. Even my own emails go in there some days. Even my assistant's emails go there. Their invoices go to spam or trash. Um, you know, client stuff, half of them goes into the main inbox and half of them go into spam or trash. Literally, you. I'm constantly checking my spam or trash folder. And you have to not only be checking, but you have to be educating your subscribers and the people that you're following up with to go look at theirs. Yes. Why do you think I do phone calls? So a lot of my opt-in boxes and a lot of my free stuff, they ask for phone number. I want name, email, and phone number, ideally. Not all of it's required. I get it. But you want to give your phone number because a lot of times we're really trying to get a hold of you for valid reasons. If you're interested in someone's stuff, please don't be afraid to give them your contact information, for goodness sakes, right? I don't, I don't like bombard you with it. I don't try to add you to a text message. I, I, one day I will probably start using text messages more because you actually have to get an opt-in to do text message marketing. And a lot of people will just text you and that's not really good etiquette. Plus it's against the spam laws, right? So you have to get opt-ins for text message marketing. Just because someone gives you a phone number does not give you the approval to text them. And you can't assume that all phone numbers are cell phones. I see you as a landline. I know I'm not the only one, okay? <laughs> I know I'm not the only one to use a business landline phone because I don't want people following me on my cell phone. I don't want everybody that I meet in my cell phone. I don't want to be texting and messaging people constantly for business from my cell phone. That is a nightmare to me and that is unorganized and inefficient. 
I want them in a database. I want their phone number, yes, but I do things differently with follow-up and phone calls. Um, some people I actually call personally if I know they're you know, someone who's really interested in what I've got or what I'm offering or that wants to talk to me sooner than later, great. I will have no problem making a phone call personally, but I also use tools like Sly Broadcast. It allows me to put in a bunch of phone numbers that of people that I've met, maybe all at the same event, right? I do a lot of speaking and exhibiting, exhibitor booths. And so sometimes I'll get 50 to 100 people that have signed up for a drawing or something and we enter them into the database. We put their phone numbers in slide broadcast. And then I, I make a voicemail that is personal to that event and them. Uh, and then I send the voicemail to all those people electronically. It's really easy and it doesn't have to be impersonal if you know what to say and how to say it, right? But um, a lot of times in that voicemail, one of the things I remind them of is like, hey, don't forget to look in your spam or trash or promotional folder because my email might be in there. If this is the first time you're on my, you know, you're getting on my email list and my emails might be over there, please rescue me from the spam folder, right? And so I make fun of it, but I also tell them to go look. And then what else I do? I send note cards in the mail. Yeah in the mail, direct mail with a stamp. Yes, I do. Things that are pre-rented, pre-written, sorry, pre-written. Um, it has some stuff about my publishing and other ways to do a phone call with me. It's very self-explanatory, but it's very detailed because I wanna follow up in more ways. And sometimes people aren't seeing the email, their voicemails don't get through or they're full or something like that. And I got to get them in the mail. So uh, especially when I'm in person and or doing an exhibitor booth or a speaking gig, I ask for full contact information and you should too. Full contact information is so important because if I send this and then it tells them to go look in their spam or trash folder and they haven't seen my emails yet, they haven't gotten any voicemail because maybe their voicemail didn't, didn't work right? Or whatever. So they're going to get this in the mail, hopefully within a week or so of me meeting them. And then they're going to go and look for the emails and hopefully pull me out of spam. So yes, I still do all three of those types of follow-up, even with social media and email these days, because email is more unreliable than it ever has been. Now it's a vital, crucial piece of our marketing strategy. Of course, we need to have people on our email list. Of course, we need to send emails out weekly and to educate, inspire, and give tips and, and make offers, right? We have to do that. But we have to also do a variety of things. I can tell you that if I have the right, the correct address for somebody, this is not getting lost in the mail 100% of the time. Maybe 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not going to get lost if I have the correct email. So I know this is getting through. If you're not doing direct mail, that's the number one thing you should add. You should add phone calls. You should add direct mail to your follow-up to a lot of your marketing. A lot of times too, throughout the year, I might have an event or two. So I might do an event postcard. This is an older one, but I had an 11 Money Live event, right? I just created this on Canva, you guys. It was free. A little bit of posts, a little bit of uh, printing costs. You can do them on Vistaprint too. And I can handwrite these. I can slap a label on it if I know how to do the mail merge label stuff. And uh, and I can send postcards off and reminding people about upcoming events. So I just want to encourage you today to really think about your follow-up. I want you to think about expanding your follow-up and not just emailing, sending one or two things and then giving up. Because a lot of times people are saying, well, they, they must not be interested. They're not emailing me back. Guess what? They probably didn't see your email. People are bombarded in their inbox, in all their social media inboxes. I mean, they have more email and messaging than we've ever had before. Way back when I started my business, we barely emailed at all. And when we did send an email, boy, we got lots of sales. That doesn't happen anymore for a lot of people. Unless you have massive amounts of people on your list, you know, tens of thousands of people, then you're probably not making a lot of money from email marketing, right? You might be nurturing people, you might be getting some open rates, but there's not a high enough volume for you to make a whole lot of money from email marketing. So we have to capture people in different ways, right? We have to think about that follow-up. And private messaging on LinkedIn and Facebook is good too. Just be careful not doing too many in one day, especially on Facebook. They're not, I don't like that. <laughs>
<laughs> they don't like it when you message somebody like a whole bunch of people all at one time. LinkedIn isn't as specific, isn't as particular about that these days, just so you know. Um, now that could change, right? But as of today, uh, yeah. So, and with the emails, don't overthink your emails. Just, you know, think of what you would say to them if they were in person with you and saying, hey, I wanted to follow up from this event and talk about X, Y, Z, or, you know, don't talk too much about yourself. Make it a win-win for them. If you focus on having a win-win relationship first and then seeing if they're interested in your business, then they're not going to unsubscribe right away, hopefully. And you can have a chance to build some relationship. Tell more about who you are, what you do. Tell more about your story, right? So those are the kinds of things that I would recommend if you really want to elevate your follow-up so that you can actually build your business, grow your revenues, and make a lot more money doing what you love. Uh, and again, this is Katrina Sawa with jumpstartyourbiznow.com and jumpstartpublishing.net. Happy to talk with anybody who really wants to hone your marketing, your lead gen, your follow-up, your sales strategies, so you can create a smooth running money-making business machine. Make sure you find me over on my websites. If you're interested in uh, book opportunities, I've got an event coming up too about um, a mastermind for your business. I've got books that are co coming due. I mean, it's just, there's a lot going on and I just love to help people get to the next level of their business. So reach out if you'd like to talk. I am very accessible and I look forward to uh, seeing you grow and expand your life and your business.